One year ago today, the Taliban swept through Kabul, taking over the capital. It was a swift and stunning development that caught the Biden administration off guard. President Biden himself the next day on the 16th of August admitted as much. The truth is, this did unfold more quickly than we had anticipated. So what's happened? Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed, sometime without trying to fight. The critics say U.S. intelligence had warned of the collapse earlier in the summer, even as the president publicly stated it was unlikely to happen. A year on, Afghanistan's economy is on life support. Millions are at risk of starving. According to the World Bank, 37 percent of Afghan households don't have enough money to cover food. Sky News reports the country's largest children's hospital there is overwhelmed. Doctors say they can't keep babies and kids who have treatable diseases alive because they don't have the medications or equipment. And girls who would be in 7th to 12th grade are banned from attending school. We have two reports tonight, one on the Afghans who were able to make it to America. But first, a look at the Taliban today from our sister network Sky News and their chief correspondent Stuart Ramsey reporting from Kabul. Congratulations to all of Muslim people. That is a very happy day. A year ago, they said they couldn't believe they took Kabul so easily. They celebrated then, and they still are. On a now public holiday, the Taliban took to the streets in their famous pickup trucks and, of course, now in their captured cars. To this conquering army, NATO's greatest failure was never in doubt. They say they always knew. These enormous convoys have been going on continuously. As you can see, they're all still fully armed. I think what the message from the Taliban to the outside world is, we're here, we're still armed, and we're here to stay. Exactly a year on, the Taliban continued a new tradition of a televised media event, open to the international media, but overwhelmingly attended by loyalists. Special Forces soldiers struggle to hold back people eager to get inside and seems somewhat at a loss what to do with women. In the audience, Taliban royalty, including Anas Haqqani, a powerful 28-year-old leader and negotiator with the United States in Doha. His arrival sparked a flurry of activity by the press corps eager for pictures of him. By chance, he sat behind me and we started chatting. He told me economically Afghanistan is struggling because foreign aid has been slashed and assets frozen. The key sticking point with the international community is education for girls. In his interview with Sky News, he hinted at compromise, but explained it would take time to convince the Taliban's old guard, saying the world must give him some room. This is nuanced stuff, but for a Haqqani family member, an ultra-conservative group, this is a big deal. How the world deals with the Taliban in the future is undecided, of course. For the foot soldiers celebrating outside the now mothballed American embassy, a symbol of a failed campaign to change Afghanistan, none of this really matters right now. In truth, many of these Taliban were babies when the war started. A trillion dollars and 21 years later, they're in total control. Stuart Ramsey, Kabul.